this game shows how important is studying classical and also how you can destroy a 70-70 federated player. I played e4 and my opponent replied with e6. Now I already played against him and won and I played as white in that game and he played French. I know for the fact that he is a French player but from my last experience he doesn't know a lot of theory and I can say that because I played the French a thousand of times I just basically play it so I know a lot of stuff. So I decided to play d4 which is the main line and now d5. At this point you can take, push, play knight on c3 or play knight on d2 basically and there are other sidelines but these are the main moves. And I decided to play knight on d2 which is the tar rush. Now you can play knight on f6 which is the most challenging way for black. Although if you're not a really scrum player you're going to get destroyed because it's pretty hard to play. Otherwise you could play c5 or taking the pawn which is the line I usually play. He decided to take which is a line that usually tends to be pretty drawish because you can play for example to play bishop on d7 which is pretty solid or the main line which is knight on d7 followed by knight on f6. Although my opponent played a side line which is knight on f6 which is inaccurate and it makes sense because the point of knight on d7 is that you want to play knight on f6 after that so when I take you can capture back with the knight. The problem now is that I can just take it. The difference is that you have to take with the queen. And after you take with the queen and play knight on f3 and your queen is just target so white is clearly better. That's why you should play knight on d7 first which is much much better. But my opponent played another sideline. He decided to play pawn take. And let me tell you something. He talked a lot about this move. He didn't know theory. And that's a huge mistake because if you play a classical game without knowing theory, you might be in a lot of trouble. Especially if you play a move like this. Like you are not going to cast a short probably. So you need to know what are you going to do. Because otherwise you get absolutely demolished. And I just decided to play knight on f3 which is the main move. Now I don't know theory after knight on f3 because I mean this line is just bad for black. In my opinion you don't have a lot. You don't even have a strong attack on the king's side. So it doesn't make a lot of sense in my opinion. And he decided to play b6. Which is apparently the move. Although Stockfish is already saying that he's plus 1.3 if you play bishop on b5 so apparently you play bishop on b5 the play c6 bishop on d3 bishop on b7 and now queen on e2 something like that as you can see black's strategy is damaged black doesn't have space we already have pressure on the king we're going to have problem castling short so white is clearly better although instead of playing bishop on b5 I decided to play, wait, what happened? Okay, I decided to play bishop on c4. So bishop on c4 makes sense, it has been played. And my point is that you cannot cast a short, so I want to put a lot of pressure on this pawn. I'm probably going to play queen on e2, develop the bishop and castle long. This was my plan, it is pretty aggressive and I like it. So he replied with bishop on a6 which is a very mistake. The point is that you take, the knight take and you play queen on e2. The knight is under attack, you need to go back and he's saying knight on b4 or knight on b8. I didn't play this because I mean I wasn't sure. Honestly, but now that I see this, well it makes a lot of sense. Also, don't you lose the knight or no? The knight is defended, but let's say you play knight on b4. Yes, yeah, c4. You want to trap the knight, probably. Yeah, this looks pretty bad. But instead of playing this move, I just decided to play queen on e2. Which is not a bad move. I mean, it makes sense. I'm threatening to take the bishop. If you take my queen is great. I'm going to cut a short at that point, probably, and put pressure on the e pawn. So yeah, it makes sense. The queen on e2 make pressure too. So yeah, makes a lot of sense. He decided to take, I took, and I'm clearly better. Now, he played bishop on d6. Apparently, you're supposed to play queen on d7. 
a queen on d7 because you want to develop the knight the point is that you cannot develop if you can develop the knight the rook is stuck and i mean you are really really passive so he decided to play bishop on d6 probably because he wants to castle although really you don't want to castle if you don't have a g pawn like it's too risky also because i can castle long and destroy you and apparently the move now is bishop on h6 i thought that at that point you could have just played rook on g8 that getting the pawn i probably have to defend it and then you want to castle long so yeah i don't know it's not easy to evaluate i decided to play bishop on e3 which is still a good move it's not so committing and my bishop makes sense so he decided to play c6 c6 is super passive uh, i don't really understand this move to be fair okay maybe you want to play queen on c7 but why because you want to win the age pawn okay i think you have bigger problems than that but yeah i decided to castle long apparently again this was a mistake just castle short i mean he played this move because he wants to play queen on c7 he can play rook on g8 and stockfish is saying yeah just castle short so everything he did makes sense but you are going to win apparently yeah i'm a human and i thought that this was absolutely stupid and i decided to play castle long apparently he says you can play h5 so what stockfish can't play so castle long queen on c7 again queen on c7 it's not super accurate probably queen on e7 was better at least you don't have the pin let me see oh yeah he's saying b5 or h5 okay I, I i understand b5 i saw it but b5 i just move you're not going to launch everything against me you get destroyed you are not in time but yeah queen on c7 is not accomplishing a lot although you want to develop the knight and castle long so it kind of makes sense i decided to play the queen one because i mean why not i want to target this and now a5 the problem with a5 is that you are not the one who is supposed to attack me you have to understand something this is classical you cannot just launch the pawn against me and pretend you're going to win i tend to think and i can figure it out and understand that i have zero problems this is just waste time and in the meanwhile i'm going to destroy you because you still have to castle this is not fast enough so i decided to play an interesting move i would say which is bishop on h6 now i don't care about the fact you want to castle short it is not that point i want to play bishop on g7 targeting the rook and after you move the rook this folds so you need to be pretty careful the difference is that before you had the queen on the eight defending the pawn now you don't that's why i thought the move bishop on h6 was down at this point so you need to do something about that also if you play rook on g8 i just defend and i get this pawn so you're going to have a lot of problems so this move makes sense he played bishop on f4 i also saw this move and i thought that i was much better after this why because after they take and the queen take your queen is kind of a target and you give me basically a free move because i want to play king on b1 anyway also by removing the queen you're going to have a problem developing the knight you cannot play that because i'm going to take so this move makes a lot of sense basically after they play king on b1 you need to move the queen back wasting another time and i can launch a risk down attack play castle short <laughs> let me tell you something you're going to get this knight like i have queen d3 rook e4 the knight is coming you still have to develop two pieces two pieces i mean if you castle short in this position you can basically design i play queen on d3 yeah it's plus two it's plus two if you have stockfish h5 <laughs> he's asking for demolition because i mean what what is the point of h5 opening everything so i can destroy you better 
Well, this move doesn't make any sense. I was really shocked by this move. Probably the only thing could be is that it prevents these. It prevents Rook on G4. Although by playing this move, you just give me a huge target. So Rook on E4 anyway, because I don't care. You <laughs> what are you even supposed to do? Queen on H6, and now as you can see, G4. So you just gave me a weakness. This is not a defensive move. This is just a offensive move for me. So you cannot take. If you take, look, take the king move and you lose the queen. As simple as that. The knight covers the h4 square, so you lose the queen. So you cannot take. What else can you do? Push the pawn. Well, I didn't even talk about that move. I thought maybe about this, but even that, take, take. Well, it is dead lost. There is nothing you can do at this point. So, yeah, okay, okay. So, king on h8. King on h8 is a try to defend your position because at least you avoid all the pins, all the stuff. After that, I saw rook on g1. And let's say you play rook on g8. So, that's why king on h8 makes a lot of sense. Uh, what can you play? I talk about g5 at this point. So, g5, can you take? Well, you don't want to take with the rook, obviously. And if you take, I mean, you open everything for me. So this was pretty aggressive. And the toy made a lot of sense. Yeah, queen on e3. And you get absolutely demolished. But instead of doing that, my opponent just made things much, much easier. Because after you play these, you still have to move the king. So uh, you are basically too late to play rook on g8. I can just play rook on g1. And g5 works too. I will play g5 first, they take, and then probably rook on g1. What is the point of rook on g1? You lose. <laughs> you cannot push because I take with check, and then threatening to push. And taking. If you take, there is still the check. If you don't, I take and there is still the check. So there is nothing you can do. King on g8, on h8, g5. You take. Look, take. Okay. He's not coming with check. But guess what? Who's going to defend this pawn? No one. Look on g8. Look, take on h4. And take. If I take the queen, I lose the rook. So he has some chance at least. Although, I have an in between move. Look, take with check. The king has to take. I win the queen. And this queen and knight against rook and knight. And after rook take on g8, my opponent resigned. <laughs> this was a, an absolute slaughter. And what can I say about this game? Well, my opponent played pretty wide moves. Like, not only in the opening, but even in the middle game. As you can see, if you weaken the king side this much like without having the g-pawn if you remember the g-pawn was there you're going to get destroyed so that's why you shouldn't castle if your scratter is so damaged and this shows you the importance of knowing theory in a classical game because if in a classical game you're going to play these which is already wrong and then you play these you really need to know what you do because otherwise you cannot cast a short, you're not going to play a normal position and you're going to get demolished because obviously if someone is better in this position is white. So as black you need to be really well prepared. But yeah, this was the last round. I won. So I finished the tournament with three and a half point out of five, which is pretty good. And I finished second. The first was my friend that beat me, he beat everyone. No, like he beat three people and the two games. 4 out of 5, great tournament, kudos to him, he played pretty well, and again something like 25-30 points, so overall I'm happy with this tournament, I passed 1700 elo feed and now I'm 1720, which is fine, and yes, I'll keep going, and hopefully I reach the CM title 2000 feed pretty soon, so see you guys with the next video.